Good morning. First of all, I would like to welcome all new subscribers. I guess I have quite a few. As a matter of fact, I'm up to 1,825 subscribers. Fancy that. I want to talk about the demons that have possessed me. And that would be white flour, white sugar, and salt. Now, salt probably isn't the worst of my demons, but the minute I start in on those things that are always around on the holidays, and that's where my troubles began. They began at Christmas. You know, I could do so well at first with just a taste or just a tablespoon or just a bite. But then the obsession in my brain takes over and suddenly I miss burgers and fries and I go out and seek those things and waste my money on them. And then that's never enough. So I need something else, maybe some chocolate. And I buy a bar and I'm very careful to only, you know, nibble on a couple of little squares. And then the couple little squares becomes one serving. And then one serving becomes half of a candy bar. And then when I realize that isn't fulfilling me, well, then I need cake or cookies. So I'll buy a thing of cookies. Sometimes I'll do the sugar-free cookies, but it doesn't matter. The cravings continue and they get bigger and worse. Then I found myself buying a Boston cream pie because birthday cake just wasn't enough at a birthday party. And the Boston cream pie, I figured out the calories and I cut it into eight pieces and I knew I was under 300 calories when I ate that piece. But it wasn't the calories. It was the white flour, the sugar, the salt, the fat that calls to me, calls to me. And then three months later, I wake up in the morning and my entire body, I mean my entire body, is racked with pain. Even my eyeballs hurt. And not only did my right leg worsen where I have this problem with uh, degenerative spine disease, or is it mostly inflammation? We've yet to know. My left side starts acting up. My left hip aches so badly, I'm thinking, what's happening to me? I'm going to be crippled if this continues. Well, I guess enough was enough because I woke up one morning and I took all of the white out of the freezer. I do still have one package of, well, it's kind of a half package of uh, English muffins. And I think I'm going to check the date. And if the date is close to expire, I'm going to throw it into the garbage bag. And if it's not close to expired, I'm going to throw it out on the coffee table because we have addicts in this, <laughs> in this facility. We have sugar addicts and white flour addicts. And you know, I almost don't even want to give that to them because I know what it's doing to me, what it did to me. So I quit it. I quit it all. Anything that was white sugar was out of here. Now I still use my xylitol, which is not, is actually anti-inflammatory and not inflammatory. So I use my xylitol and things like my, um, I like uh, canned uh, peaches in their own juice. And I buy the big can of that, 29 ounces. And when I need a sweet, I throw some xylitol on those and have those. Uh, I use a little xylitol in my coffee because I do like my coffee black but sweet. I threw my milk out too because I don't know 
which demons are creating this problem. So I'm kind of starting at scratch. I have kept potatoes. I might experiment with getting rid of those for a few days and see if I, you know, feel even better. But I got to tell you, I woke up this morning and I was like, what's different here? I'm not racked with pain. My left side doesn't hurt anymore. The base of my skull to my lumbar isn't pulled and spasming. Such a simple thing with such incredible results. Why do we keep going back to that which we know destroys us, the demons in our lives? And I'm sorry. The white stuff is the devil. Sugar, salts, and fats. I still use butter when I make scrambled eggs and scrambled eggs is what I like for dinner. And uh, I don't really necessarily eat a third meal. I start my day out somewhere around 11 to noon and I like eating my shepherd's pie first. That's just simply potatoes mashed and this time I needed some liquid so I used some vegetable broth in there and some butter and a bit of sea salt. And I, I mashed that up and I stuck it on the bottom and I baked that first so it would be firmer. And then I scrambled up onion, garlic, and uh, grass-fed beef. I'm using grass-fed beef. And I did that and uh, then when my, uh, and, and, and diced, a can of diced tomatoes and then some seasonings that, you know, I like maybe a little bit of Italian seasoning or what have you. And I, I uh, when, when my uh, potato crust was done and was firmer, I let it cool a little bit and then I threw that combination. And, oh, you know what else? Instead of doing the corn separately in a layer, I threw my frozen corn into the beef mixture. And I... Uh, defrosted it in there, like cooked it, you know. And then I put that whole mixture into the bottom layer of potato, and then I threw more potato on top, and I smoothed over and baked it for over half an hour. And now when I want some, so it's in the fridge now, you know, cooled off, and I just cut a slice, throw it on a piece of foil, and put it in my toaster oven, and, and uh, I, I like to really um, crisp it up. I, I like it nice and crunchy on the outside and that's breakfast but it's really brunch because you know it's about 11 or 12 that I'll eat for the first time and then um sometimes I might have peaches or I'll defrost some berries overnight which I forgot to do last night oh you know what I might try strawberries and peaches I might like heat that up a little bit, add a little xylitol, and I do throw a little bit of heavy cream on top. Heavy cream doesn't seem to bother me. It's just plain, it's not whipped or anything. I'm too lazy to, too lazy to get the beaters out. Yeah, I just bought a new thing of beaters, and um, $12 on Amazon. Cha. And so, um, yeah, I feel clear. I have energy. I actually woke up this morning and instead of been like, oh, why? Why do I have to get out of bed? It was more like, I'd like to do something today. Other things going on in my life. So yeah, so my food has changed drastically and I'm feeling so much better. I actually... I went to do the laundry upstairs uh, two days ago, and I actually did some time on the elliptical, and the, there's an exercise room on second floor, the elliptical and little 
stationary bike. And um, yeah, I exercise instead of sitting on my rump looking at the phone. Other things that's going on in my life. Um, so I just want to say, you know, if you're suffering, try an elimination diet. Eliminate everything you possibly can and stick with everything anti-inflammatory that you can and see how you feel. I know it's not easy, but I think I was suffering enough to be able to say no more. I can't take any more. I got myself a new heating thing. It's supposed to be far infrared. It's supposed to have the little um crystals. It's this thing here. I saw Bunny lives here. She had a belt. So I started looking because she has back trouble. I started looking on the internet. This thing is great. My atlas and axis are covered in here. And then it goes over your shoulders like this and it has a little magnetic pull, uh, you know, clasp thingy. It's like magnetic. Well, it was magnetic. What the heck happened? Well, anyway, it sticks together and um, it goes all the way down to my sacrum, which is like a really, there, see, it did connect. Go figure. Um, it goes down to my sacrum where I have a lot of trouble. Uh, with my L4, L5, because uh, L4 literally collapsed onto L5, which causes a lot of problems and which one orthopedic doctor thinks is the reason why my right hip doesn't want to work. He says, I think it's your lumbar, not your hip, because he looked at my MRIs. That was the decision he made. I think he just wants to do the lumbar and let somebody else deal with the hips, and I ain't going there. No. I pray. I listen to affirmations for healing and success every night as I go to sleep. And now I'm changing again the way I eat because I am hell-bent on healing without surgery. I believe with all my heart, mind, and soul it can be done. I just have to smarten up and cut the crap and quit trying to fix my feelings with soft, fluffy, white things. Maybe I'll get myself a fluffy, white, bear, faux bear rug and cuddle with that when I think I need cake. Mercy. It takes a lot to teach me, but I'm learning. So the other thing going on is um, I had the uh, internet affordability thing. Um, it, it kept my internet access at home to $25 a month. Well, $26 once you throw the other fees in. And um, it's going up. And the other in misfortune is that my uh, there wasn't enough funds here in Florida for seniors to get electric help. So families are first, uh, no income is second, and seniors are last, poor seniors. And so we didn't get any. And um, that's going to mean uh, high electric bills for the summer. And where, you know, I'm living off of 990 a month. Um, yeah. I really don't think I can keep my internet access because in about three more months I'll be out of um, my balance for my electric help and that's going to be in the worst of the months which are going to you know going to be 100 degree days and my bill is usually it spikes up to about in September it spikes up to about 125 and I don't know if it'll be more than that because electricity costs just keep going up they never go down. No, they did. They went down for the duration of uh, my lie heap. <sighs> ah, well. So, back to the old drawing board. But I do have my phone. And um, if I want to use my internet, I can go to the library. 
and, you know, take my laptop and just plug into theirs. And um, I, I think getting, now that I feel better in only three days, Lord knows how much better I'm going to feel in three weeks. I, I'd like to start living a little. I'd like to start going to the beach more. I'd like to start going to the library. I'd like to start going to see things. Maybe I'll take that $25 a month from the internet that I've been spending and take a short trip. I know 25 in a van doesn't go very far because I only get 9 to 10 miles to the galley. <laughs> Isn't that awful? 9 to 10 miles a gallon. Lordy. Oh. But I want to be able to show you some of Florida, especially old Florida. And that tends to be more toward the middle of the state now or, you know, further north and on the edges. And um, I love old Florida. It's just the most charming of places. You don't have... Well, yeah, you'll have some rich people that took over property and, and, and you know, gentrified it. But um, there's a lot of areas still that are just the way they were. And that's what I love. I love the old things, the old ways. I'm not so sure all these wonderful technological advantages are in our best interest. I know it makes life easier and more expensive, of course, because we have to pay for these wonders. I don't know. I think I've talked enough and I've let you know what's going on in my life. And I want to encourage you, don't give up if you're ill. You can change it. In three short days, it's changed so much. I can't even believe it. Yesterday was a little iffy, but I definitely felt better. Today, it's like night and day, three days later. I hope it's not just the lower humidity and heat today. We'll find out because we're going to have some warmer days coming. But I'm going to stay on the path and see how I feel. And I will let you know. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Love you all. Have the best day possible. Mwah.